Okay, because DLA Bawaku, I am very sorry if I cannot pronounce your name correctly. Because he wanted to see a playthrough of this game, I decided, let's do it. Because quite frankly, I too feel like this game is worth showing off. Just a quick note that it's made by the same person who made Dracula's Shadow, Mitch made. And it was made in the same engine that Dra- Well, more like Dracula's Shadow was made in the same engine that this fan game was made in. So I'm just going to show you the win config file again. Looks very much like what you saw in Dracula's Shadow that I showed you. I changed the DXAC to a DXSA. And I changed the AXA using Allegro Mixer to a DXA. So just the straight up first direct sound device. I still feel like it had something to do with the Allegro Mixer as to why Mitch Meets fan games would crash. I mean, since I made those two changes, I haven't had this fan game crash once either. Which is really important because there's no save feature in this one, like in Dracula's Shadow. I mean, it's a much smaller game, less ambitious. This came first, I can only imagine. But you really do just need to hope that the game won't crash on you in the middle of it because there are some really tough levels in here. And there's no save feature. I'm not sure what Parlex is. I'll just leave it on. And yeah, this fan game's allowed to. I'm gonna have to turn down the volume on it. In Camtasia Rook Studio. All I can say is that this fan game's not quite on par with Dracula's Shadow. And you'll see why if you watch the whole Let's Play. Okay, I gotta be a little more careful here. Yeah, you'll notice that the first stage is very easy. Not too surprising, because it's the first stage. The Phantom Town. Looks great, has some great music. You're probably wondering what could possibly go wrong. Oh, and I can use X to throw a sub weapon. I don't have to just hold up and use the whip. You're probably wondering what could go wrong. Just wait till later on in the fan game. Oh yeah. The ceiling strike again. I mean, this and Dracula Shadow were made in roughly the same game engine, so they're going to play very similar to lead to one another. Like, I really have to turn my speakers down so I don't get blasted by this fan game. Music's good and all, but I don't want to go deaf. Yeah, this is also easy because there's not that many enemies that could, well, potentially kill you. Plus, there's no instant death pits you have to worry about falling in, so... It's a really easy stage to start things off. And in case you couldn't already tell, it handles more like a traditional Castlevania game than it does Simon's Quest. I mean, Dracula's Shadow was a sort of a... Fan successor to Simon's Quest. This feels more like the other Castlevania games, like 1, 3, 4, the linear ones, where you're just going through levels, hoping you don't get killed by the hordes of undead, and fighting end bosses. Like this bat right here. Which is really easy if you use the cross and just use the cross. Well, it does use a lot of Simon's Quest elements, so it's kind of like a hybrid. I don't know what else to say about that. So let's go on to the Cursed Forest. Yeah, it's even got these wolves from Simon's Quest that if you get anywhere close, they just start jumping around and they're really hard to hit. And yes, the blobs are going to appear in this fan game too, but you kind of got to wait another level, thankfully. They only show up starting at level 3. So yeah, it functions exactly like linear Castlevania, minus a few key differences, like most of the graphics are very much Simon Quest inspired, or they come directly from it. And this is actually really annoying. I don't have anything that aims upwards, so I'm probably going to take a hit just trying to get around these wolves here, or just be patient and I'll get lucky. Big heart too. Yeah, 
Now you'll notice that the cross makes is relatively easy. You can just go for it and not have to really think about much because the cross is going to do all the work for you. As if you don't lose it. But we'll talk about that later because we probably are going to lose it at least once. Maybe by stage 4. That's where there's one really annoying part of the fan game. Stage 4. Yeah, you can pick up sub-weapons and shaw multipliers just like in linear Castlevania titles. So now I can have two cross on screen at once. It's just... And now I can't because I just got another weapon instead. Yeah, holy water, boomerang, or cross, dagger, axe. All those weapons you'd expect to see in a fan game based off the linear Castlevanias. They're all here. Except for the watch. I don't recall seeing the watch in this one, but it's not that big a deal, because the watch never was all that useful for the most part. Unless you got a lot of hearts, and you can't even really use it during boss fights, it just does nothing. Oh, hey, a whip upgrade. Spiders are always annoying. And there's another one here, so you could easily just get knocked into the pit. Yeah, there's a lot of instant death pits in some of the later stages, and that makes the game really frustrating. I'll definitely go into more detail about that when I get there. Oh sweet, double shot, holy water. This is supposed to be the Skull Knight from Castlevania 3, but... He's just weird in this fan game. He just flies for no explicable reason. And he's a lot faster than a Skull Knight in that game would ever be. And I really gotta be careful. I wasn't watching my health, so he can easily kill me. Probably just gonna keep a distance, but... Not even inflicting a lot of damage. So you get to hear more of this awesome boss theme, but I'm probably gonna get my ass kicked here. Unless I just play it really safe, but even then that might not work. Whip doesn't do much damage, doesn't have much reach. This is sort of a remix of the Phantom Town theme. Like what you heard in Phantom Town. This is like kind of a remix of that. And it's an awesome one at that. Yeah, you can play it really safe. It'll take forever, but you'll get the kill nonetheless. Oh yeah, Sacred Grave. I don't know where this music is from, but it's pretty damn awesome. Axe is a, the axe is another fairly good weapon in this fan game. Even the daggers aren't too bad. And usually the daggers are some of the most inferior sub weapons by far. Wait, what? Apparently you don't full heal after you complete a stage in this fan game, which is weird. Every other Castlevania game I've played, I'd get a full heal after I killed the boss. Nope, not this one. I don't think the enemies can take like a third of your health away each time, so it probably was the former where I just didn't get a full heal after I killed that boss. So now that I'm done talking about that, I'll talk about one of the more annoying things about this fan game. You have a whip, you can pick up upgrades for it, you can have it like a level 0, level 1, level 2, so on and so forth. I'll kill this guy in a row, but then that guy in a row will turn into Carmilla for some reason. And that should unlock something, but it didn't seem to do so. Yeah, 
every other time I've met one of those guys in robes, he never- I can never attack him, nor would he turn to Carmilla if I did somehow kill him. Yeah, that's- that's Mishmeen's own idea right there. Yeah, there's those blobs. They'll probably make you wish you never started playing this fan game, only too sure. So I just want to talk about one of the more annoying things about this fan game. I really lost track of what I was saying. So yeah, you can have three different power levels for your whip. It could be a leather whip, could be like a chain whip, or it could be a morning star, which is a longer chain whip. And stronger than the chain whip. But every time you get hit, you actually lose a whip upgrade! You actually become weaker, and your sub-weapons are also based on the power level of your whip, so if you're taking too many hits, the next thing you know, a bunch of the enemies that you're trying to kill might just take, like, three or four hits, and that'll just make them harder to kill. And... Yeah, just imagine if these blobs take, like, three or four hits to kill. And yeah, there's blobs everywhere in this stage. So you really just gotta play it safe. Or hope you get really lucky. Cause there are blobs everywhere in this stage. If you get hit just once, you're gonna lose your whip upgrade. And then next thing you know, the blobs will probably take two hits to kill. And that'll just make the blobs harder to kill, and that'll just make it harder to recover your sub-weapons, because you'll just keep getting hit. You get the idea. And now the blobs take two hits to kill because I have no more sub weapon or anything like that. And because the blobs take more hits to kill, it'll be harder to recover your sub weapons because you'll have a hard time killing the enemies. So sometimes trying to recover your sub weapons or anything is next to impossible. I know what to expect, so I did fairly good against the blobs. You know, I played this fan game a few times before, so I kind of know what to expect. And there's Death! He just got lumped in somewhere near the beginning. And now he just died to four dagger throws. He was never that weak in any Castlevania game I've ever played. And here's by far one of the most annoying enemies in the entire game. Fishmen. Yeah, Fishmen. They jump out of the water in a lot of places. Sometimes they take a lot of hits to kill if you don't have a powerful whip. Which makes it hard to keep whatever whip upgrades you do have unless you have, like, the maximum. Which is like the Morning Star. Which makes it really easy for one of them to just hit you and make you lose the whip upgrade you have. Which then means that you have to hit them three times to kill them. And then your whip length is also shortened, so it's hard to hit them sometimes. Sometimes they shoot a fireball at you before you even got a chance to hit them. Making that whole mechanic where you can lose your whip upgrades one of the most annoying things in this entire fan game by far. Just because some of the enemies could actually get cheat hits in on you. The fishmen especially, because they are very random. Sometimes they attack faster than you can attack. Like that. Like, you really just have to know that they're coming ahead of time. I mean, even then, sometimes you're still screwed if you just make one little slip up. 
gets worse if there's a bunch of instant death pits around these fishmen. Like, you'll see exactly what I mean by level 5. I, it's probably going to take a while to make it there unless I get really lucky here, but you'll see exactly what I mean by stage 5. Yeah, these next sets of blocks here actually break, so you have to jump across them with no hesitation, and if a fishman sabotages you anywhere along the way, you're going to have to commit suicide because these blocks never respawn. You have to go right away. If you don't, you're not even going to jump off the block. You're just going to fall to your death. But if you do go right away, there's a chance you hit the fishman. And then, even if you do survive getting knocked back, you can't go and salvage it because that block will never reappear. But once you get past that, you pretty much get to fight the end boss. But getting past that's very hard. And for all the wrong reasons, too. These guys jump back in the water sometimes, but still. Yeah, that can happen sometimes. The axes seem to work fairly well against these fishmen. They just jump right above your head, then jump onto the platform that you're standing on. Which makes them really good targets for the axe if they don't shoot a fireball at you before you get a chance to hit them. Oh god, we did it. Did it on the second try. You just have to run, jump, and not even think about the fishmen. And if one shoots a fireball at you, then you're screwed. Now we're gonna fight the Monkey Man from Castlevania 3. Like, this was what Grant looked like before you killed him, and then... This was what Grant looked like when he was a ghost, but apparently Mitch Mead thought this was Igor, and not even... Like... I mean, this was Grant's ghost form, but... Mitch Mead called him Igor. Which looks nothing like the Igor in Dracula's Shadow, which quite frankly looks more like Alucard from Castlevania 3. And he shoots a little... In fact, he didn't even shoot fireballs in Castlevania 3. Now he shoots so many projectiles, it's just hard to move around and deal with them, but you really just gotta keep a distance and hope you kept your axe. And this is another level I don't like in this fan game. You'll see why. Caves of Terror. The music's not too bad, but it gets annoying after a while, because you probably... You might just find yourself stuck here for a very long time. For all the wrong reasons, too. I'm gonna try and get to that cross, because it's probably one of the best weapons in this whole fan game. Maybe even the best. I like having something that covers a good portion of the screen. Yeah, this section contains hardly enemies. This section contains hardly any enemies at all. And for the most part, you're just doing a lot of walking. And yes, this whole stage is much longer than it needs to be. Most of this is just unnecessary filler, really. Especially here, because I don't think there's even any enemies around here. And then I'm gonna have to go all the way around. You gotta go all the way around, too. Yep. And there's no 
enemies here, so you literally all you have to do here is just walk from one end of the cave to the next. And then you gotta walk back! I hope you get the idea why this stage sucks so far. Some of the levels aren't that well designed. It's only a few stages that are that poorly designed. Everything else isn't too bad. There's a lot of good music choices throughout the course of this fan game as well. It makes me wonder where some of these are actually from, or if it's being composed them by him or herself. And I said you'd see why losing your power-ups gets annoying by stage 5. Yeah, there's water here, so I was expecting Fishman the first time I played through this fan game and this stage. But I wasn't expecting blobs, and I also got those. Which, as you can imagine, are very tough to hit sometimes. Unless you know where they are straight away and your cross just flat out hits them. Now, you really want to bring the cross into this section just to be able to hit the blobs, no problem. Leeches aren't that hard to deal with, but the blobs and the fishmen are horrible. There's a leech up here, so I'm gonna have to just double back like this. And there's so many fishmen in this one area, it is ridiculous. And you really do not want to get knocked down to your leather whip, because then the blobs would take two hits to kill, making them very difficult to deal with. And as you can see, you really don't want to get hit anywhere along the way because almost half the stage consists of instant death pits. If you fall in the water, you're just dead immediately. Oh great, now I'm out of crosses. This isn't good. I hope I'm past all the fishmen because there seemed to be one after every jump I took. No, there was one after every jump I took. So if you don't have the crosses with you, you're probably screwed there, because... Those blobs are just hard to hit. If you take too much damage, the next thing you know, they'll take two hits to kill, making them almost impossible to deal with. And then this boss here is no slouch either. The Mud King. Really, you just want to hit him as fast as possible, hoping he dies before you do. Dodging up is next to impossible.